Uh, Kelly O'Dwyer joins us uh, with Richard Miles. Kelly, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tom. Great to be with you and your listeners. And Richard, good to talk with you too. Good afternoon, Tom. How are you? I'm well. This is the last one of our debates for 2013, so let's make the most of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Holden Motor Company, Kelly, this morning, your dear leader, as we'll call him, Tony Abbott, said he wasn't sure if there'd be any more money for the car industry. Is this the end of Holden in Australia? Well, what Tony said is that Holden need to clarify with all of the suppliers, with its employees, exactly what its intentions are. Mm. We've been very upfront. We've said exactly how much money we are able to spend on the car industry. We took our policy to the election on that basis. We have said, though, that we would properly look at and review the policies that have been in place, not only here but around the world, um, through the Productivity Commission's review into the car industry. But, but just on the product Activity Commission, my understanding is um, that review will not be complete until, is it March or even June next year? Well, we said we have to do a comprehensive know, review. Holden needs a decision before that. Well, we, we have been very clear with Holden. We've told them our timing. Um, this was some months ago that we told them our timing, and they need to be very clear. If they're going to make decisions absent of that review, if they do not wish the government to have all of the facts at our disposal before we make a decision, then they just need to come clean on that. Richard, what does that sound like to you? Well, I think we all knew that the uh, coalition were going to kill the car industry. I just don't think we knew they were going to do it by the end of the year. Um, and what we actually need to see happen is the coalition come clean with actually what their view is. I mean, we are seeing internal division within this government and within this cabinet within three months of coming to power uh, where there are clearly very divergent views. And actually, the, the government needs to get its act together and work out, is it going to support this industry or not, which it obviously should. Let's, um, let's be fair, though, Richard. I mean, uh, Ford decided to end manufacturing under your watch, and I sadly think there's a chance Holden will do it under your watch, Kelly. So both of you are individually to blame. But um, <laughs> I'm pleased. I'm pleased we've clarified that. Well, no, but let's be honest here. I mean, I mean, do we? I mean, you know, I've, I've put this question many times. I mean, how much do we want a local car industry locally made we want cars? It. We okay. want it. Well, look, we've always said we want a sustainable car industry. Mm. We absolutely do want that. We want a strong and viable manufacturing industry in this country as well. But the question has to be how much taxpayer money mm. has to continue to go into the car industry for the very last time, every time that that request is made. And I think it is entirely appropriate and, and very prudent and very wise for us to get all of the facts on the table, which is what we're doing with the Productivity Commission review. Now, we're not going to be blackmailed by Holden or anybody else on putting money into the car industry when we don't have all the facts on the table. Angelo, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, Tom. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, look, would you agree that tariffs are a form of uh, theft, theft against the consumer? I mean, every time the jo job, jobs are lost in industries that aren't productive, the tariff argument comes up. And really, tariffs are a form of theft, theft against the consumer. I, I agree, Angela. Although I think I don't think anybody is proposing new tariffs for the car industry. I, I, I spoke to Nick Xenophon about this before, and he was saying no. And then he talked about free trade agreements and so forth. Richard, would I assume that you would not be arguing for the reimposition of tariffs on cars? Yeah, that's not where the debate is at. Where the debate is at is whether or not there is support for this industry, and, mm. and it is a unique industry. It's a unique industry in this respect. Well, it's not that unique. I mean, no, no. It, well, I'll tell you quite, what. There's quite a lot of countries that have one. Well, no, it's sure, but it, actually not that many. No. But it is unique within an economy because it's high-tech manufacturing. It's the highest tech manufacturing that we do in Australia. And for many countries who do this, it is the highest tech manufacturing they do. And that's why countries support it. And in every country where there is a car industry, it is in essence a public-private partnership. And if you look at the degree of public participation in Australia compared to other countries, it's relatively low. Now, if we get rid of the car industry, we are a dumber manufacturing country and manufacturing is down for the count. And that's the real lesson that we need to understand here. Ted, good afternoon. Hello, Ted. Oh, Ted's gone. Chris, hello. How are you going? Good. It's the year of the Bulldog, by the way, Tom. Don't worry about Carlton. Don't um, worry. Oh, really? So this is, it's finally going to happen, is it? I'll be waiting for a few years. <laughs> on, on a more serious note, um, you did give the Conservative uh, who was there today a bit of a, an out when you said, oh, well, it helped the Ford happen under the Labor watch, so it's a dead heat. I do know the coalition didn't jump out to try and save Ford, so I think 
I agree that they, they want to close up that. Well, uh, Chris, be fair. I mean, what, what, could, what, what would you expect the opposition to do? I mean, they can't write checks. Well, uh, they could have sabre-rattled and just made some sort of effort. Well, like, uh, held, a, held a gun to, uh, to uh, Kevin Rudd's head. Well, okay, anyway, I guess they could have. But what I'm saying is that... Now that it looks like it's going to happen, I want to ask your guest from the Conservative side, what plans do you have for the employment and the, and the assistance to those hundreds of thousands of people who will be dislocated without work? Don't just dance around and say you're not going to be bulldozed and bullied. These people will need help. Chris, it's a, it's, it's a very good question. I'm going to give Kelly O'Dwyer two or three minutes to contemplate her response. In the meantime, we'll listen to some news headlines from Tony Tardio. Tony, good afternoon. Thank you, Tom. Good afternoon to you. Nelson Mandela is being remembered as a giant figure of the 20th century and a social icon who made the world a better place. Tributes have been flowing in from around the world for the anti-apartheid hero who passed away aged 95. Prime Minister Tony Abbott has described him as an inspiration for his capacity to forgive and reconcile his country. The investigation into the disappearance of the Western Australian and Senate ballot papers has found the fate of the missing ballots may never be known. Coles and Woolworths have agreed to limit their shopper docket fuel discounts. The ACCC says the two supermarket giants will set a maximum discount limit of four cents a litre, placing restrictions on how the fuel savings are paid for. A $100,000 reward is being offered to solve the murder of a Faulkner grandmother whose body was found stuffed in a barrel. And in sports, Australia a short time ago, nine for 543 in the test match at the Adelaide Oval. More in 3AW News at 5. Thanks, Tony. Calls for Kelly O'Dwyer and Richard Miles coming up. 96900693131332. It's 27 to 5. 3AW traffic for tyre power. Get in now to get away during their great getaway sale. The Monash Freeway, heavy run from Burke Road through to Belgrave, Hallam Road with a zippy bit between Warrigal Road and East Link. And the Eastern Freeway, feeling the pinch now a little bit in the outbound lanes as those left ones with traffic heading off at the off-ramps, particularly at Bullion Road. If you're coming into town on the Tullamarine Freeway, it's pulling up from Dinan Road, heading into the Westgate Freeway over the Balti Bridge and driving out. Now a thick and sluggish one at patches from the Balti Bridge right out towards the Ring Road, particularly hectic leading up to the Calder Freeway split. Also, the Westgate Freeway, bad news in both directions from Todd Road, outbound due to an earlier smash at Forsyth Road on the Princess Freeway. That's finally been packed up and almost cleared now. The Ring Road, if you're driving towards Greens Road, sluggish past Sunshine Avenue. Then a good run until you get to the Craggyburn Bypass and a bit of a battle through to High Street. If you're driving towards the Westgate Freeway, thick past the Calder Freeway. Also a smash being cleared in Elwood on Ormond Esplanade, not too far away from Glen Huntley Road. And that's 3AW traffic. Save all your files and access them from any device, anywhere, with MyCloud from WD. Finding a cloud of your own. Learn more at mycloud.com. I'm Caroline Ferguson. Make this a December to remember at Lexus of Blackburn's 2013 Demonstrator Clearance. Our 2013 Demonstrator vehicles come with three years complimentary scheduled servicing as well as providing unbelievable buying opportunities. All Demonstrator vehicles must clear, so now's the time to get yourself an unbeatable deal. Hurry, stock is strictly limited. Visit 146 Whitehorse Road or lexusofblackburn.com.au. Terms and conditions apply. Lexus of Blackburn, Melbourne's Lexus Specialist, LMCT 10093. There's an exciting loyalty program in sports and community clubs around Victoria. It's called Club Mix, and it's a great place to meet new friends or catch up for a laugh with old ones. Plus, you can win great prizes, like a trip to Hamilton Island. You can find Club Mix at Whittlesea Bowls Club, Churnside Park Country Club and Eastwood Golf Club, plus many more. Go to clubmix.org.au today and see if your local club is in the mix. You're at the airport, you take a selfie, going on holiday. Taking a selfie only gets you likes on Facebook, but take a selfie of you in your car and you could win a free parking bay at Melbourne Airport until 2020. That's right, free parking until 2020. And there's 12 bays to be won. For details and conditions, visit melbourneairport.com.au. You can even book your next park online and save up to 75%. Free airport parking till 2020? That's something to, well... Like. One Saturday morning, I was listening to 3RW and the drain man was on. So I rang them. He found drains with the equipment that he had that I didn't know existed and other plumbers had never been able to find. 
and the main one that he found was causing all the trouble and if he hadn't have found that we would have still had the trouble with the garage flooding. We now have a place where all the draining system is working perfectly. So don't call a plumber, call the Drain Man. Hi, I'm Brendan from the Drain Man. Call us to unblock your drains. 1-800-843-372. The Drain Man. It's on again. The Noni B one day only sale of sales. All Noni B stores have a genuine 50% off everything tomorrow only. This is a fashion event that all women have been waiting for. The Noni B 50% off everything sale is on tomorrow in store or online at nonib.com.au. Imagine solving a murder case. The complexity, the urgency. But imagine solving the same case. 100 years ago. Are you saying I'm a suspect? Indeed. Murdoch Mysteries. Catch brand new episodes of one of 13th Street's most popular series every Saturday night at 7.30. I'm Detective William Murdoch. Join me for an all new mystery every Saturday at 7.30. Exclusive to 13th Street. Only on Foxtel. <laughs> At Woodpecker, you'll be laughing too. Learn how to barbecue in style on a Weber Q from Woodpecker. This weekend, see all six barbecues in the Weber Q range in action with high lead, thermometer and electronic ignition. Weber Barbecue Chef's cooking from 11 till 3. Try juicy steaks, roast pork with golden crackling and pizza. Plus, purchase a Weber Q and you'll receive a free roasting trivet. This weekend only at Woodpecker Oakley East. (laughs) Woodpecker.com.au Next Friday, the Lexus CT200H will pull into a mystery driveway, a special delivery to the Rumorphile winner. You can still enter. Call the Rumorphile just after 7 on 3 w Breakfast, thanks to Lexus of Blackburn. Vic Permit 13129. You're listening to Drive with Tom Elliott. It is uh, 23 to 5. Now, just quickly, uh, earlier I asked the question about whether or not Franco Cozzo had gone to jail. I can now clarify that that's not the case, and I didn't mean to imply that he did, and I'm sorry for any confusion or offence that I caused. OK, before the break, a caller asked Kelly O'Dwyer if Holden stops manufacturing in Australia and upwards of 50,000 people lose their jobs, and that assumes that Toyota would also stop and various parts manufacturers would struggle, what would you do with the resultant unemployment? Kelly? Well, Tom, uh, I think it was Chris who actually asked this question, and the truth is that it's a tragedy when anybody loses their job. It's a tragedy for that person and for their families and for those communities, and I wouldn't make light of that point. The the point that I make is that we are spending billions and billions of taxpayer dollars on subsidising an industry where we have seen production fall. It is more than halved over the last 10 years, and we are not exporting cars, which is what we actually said that we wanted to be able to do to have a sustainable industry here. So I I'm simply saying that we need to be very careful when we use taxpayers' money and make sure that it is efficient. Now, the previous government made it a lot more difficult for the car industry and for manufacturers because it put a carbon tax, making it more and more expensive to manufacture cars here. We know that if people lose their jobs, the government does have a responsibility to make sure that those people are supported, to make sure that they are retrained and reskilled, and to make sure that we have the right strong economy so that they can go out and get another job. I'll just inject one positive note. When Mitsubishi shut down, I think it was in 2007 or 2008, they stopped making the, the Mitsubishi 380. Before that, it was the Magna. They actually found a few years later that they, overall there hadn't been too many jobs lost. Most of the workers appeared to have found better jobs. But, Richard, quickly, the carbon tax, did that make life more difficult for the car manufacturers? There is not a car company around which is mm. blaming its issues on the on, did on it carbon. make it harder? Oh, it, or did it, it make it easier? Well, it, it, what, what, the, what the price on carbon has done is make our economy uh, much more able to deal with the way the world is going and, 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 and wean ourselves off carbon. But it is a tiny, infinite... Did it, it increase? It's a small costs. amount of what's going on, and it is absolutely not the issue. And frankly, to be focusing on this in, in, in a context where these companies are doing it tough in a whole lot of other areas, and to ignore the fact that at the last election there was a billion dollars in difference between what Labor was taking to the election for the car industry and what the Liberals were taking, um, you know, forgets that point. All right, let's go to some calls. Ted, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tom. I was just saying that if you look in the car park at the Ford factory and the Holden factory, 
how many holders and purchases there. They're all Japanese cars, the employees mm. drive. Ted, I remember seeing that very thing at Mitsubishi. They looked in the car park and they didn't see too many Mitsubishis. Don't know about that. Well, look, I, coming from Geelong and driving past the Ford factory every day, it is Fordville. In fact, the whole of Geelong is Fordville. There yes. are Fords everywhere. So I'm not sure I'd agree with that. And certainly all the Ford execs um, mm. all drive around in Fords, as, as you would hope they would. Now, you, you politicians with mm. the um, the limousines that you're given to be ferried limousines. around in. I'm not, I'm not given a limousine to be ferried around in. No. But, but you are, I mean, it, it, they are local cars, aren't they? We're, we're given we're given a car as part of our allowance, and my car I, I chose a Ford Territory. Mm. It's a great car. I don't, I don't you, deny it's not. It's, well, it's you're a talking about the I, Com cars, I think, and they oh, are, yeah. they're all Australian made. But, 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 the, but our electric cars, we get a choice on, and and like Kelly, I've chosen a Ford Territory oh, so you, as well. So you, you can choose to buy or not buy an Australian car. Uh, no, they're all Australian. They cars. are Australian. They are. That's good. Uh, Patricia, hello. Hi, Tom. Um, my argument is to have a level playing field if our cars go to the Asian countries and the registration is huge, why don't we do the same thing here? Well, because I guess the issue is, Patricia, would we actually be taxing ourselves if we did that? I mean, Australians like buying cheap Asian cars, so if you made it more expensive, would we not be hurting ourselves? Let's make it a level playing field. And maybe it will help. Right, well, okay. well I, look, well, Patricia, with respect, I, I don't agree with you on that. Um, and, and the reason is um, it, it, it doesn't end well. When you start putting protection on your cars or on, on specific industries, um, other countries also do the same. They retaliate and it makes it much more expensive for the consumer. And it also makes it more expensive and more difficult for our manufacturers, um, our, our agricultural exporters to be able to get into different markets. Now, we've just signed a free trade agreement with Korea. This is a wonderful thing. Mm. This will give us an opportunity to access another market. And we have, in this agreement, um, we have reduced the, the tariffs that have been provided to agricultural products, in some cases, by up to 300%. Now, that's great for our dairy producers, for our grain producers, for, for you know... Um, um, for all of our farmers no, no, who are Richard, going to be able to access this market. You're a former Minister of Trade. Mm. So do you like these free trade agreements? Oh, the, there's definitely a unity ticket here this afternoon when it, when it comes to trade. And, and Well, the Korean Free Trade Agreement was initiated under the Labor government and we uh, welcome uh, this this agreement. We, obviously, we want to see the, the, the detail, but getting uh, a free trade agreement with Korea is definitely a good well, result. What, happen, what happens when you go down to the trades hall and everybody's calling each other comrade? Comrade this and comrade that, and you sing the international, and then you walk in, <laughs> you walk in in your suit and tie. Do you know that's and never happened? And yeah. you talk, well, I've been they, there. They, 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 they must warn when you're coming in. Is it, is maybe it, you are it, a bit different to the normal Labour person. You know, there's pictures of Gough Whitlam and Lennon and Marx around the walls. Well, okay. Well, let's just go to Gough. Gough was the prime minister in this country, which began the process of ah. reducing our, tar- our tariff barriers. He went so, to China, and he went to China. So, um, in fact, what you perceive as the, your typical Labour person is not necessarily correct. We have always been pro-trade. We are the party which opened up Australia's economy to the great benefit of our economy today. Jeff, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, Tom. Um, I'm an average taxpayer. I'd like to see an average uh, or local um, uh, money being invested in forming a brand new company that's made locally, owned by Australians and supported by all levels of government and media in Australia, so that we can once and for all stop talking about these foreign companies, what they want to do, what they don't want to do. Well, so, Jeff, would you like a, an all-Australian car to be made? Yes, that's exactly what I'm proposing. Yeah. I'm suggesting that we need local investment, a consortium of some sort to start, and local people will support it both electorally and every which way. All right, thanks, Jeff. If you don't believe me, you need to ask other local taxpayers. No, 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 I do agree with you. In fact, we did a segment recently on what we'd call a, a genuine Australian car. Quickly, Richard, um, when Ford does vacate its manufacturing premises in Geelong, do you have any idea what's going to happen to those those massive buildings? No, it's a good question. No. And, and uh, I mean, there are actually a number of... Uh, uh, Possibilities, and there are a number of companies which are looking at using them, and we really hope that that happens. But it, it, in a sense, that's a it's a nice way, you know, not a nice way, but it's a neat way of looking at uh, this issue. Um, there, there is industrial capability which exists in this country by virtue of the fact that we make cars. We will lose that capability if we don't make cars again. But we also manufacture in other areas too. Not, I mean, not we, in the we same high tech way. Well, well, we do have high tech manufacturing. We we have high tech robotics. We we manufacture drugs. 
drugs scale. as well. I mean, we, we have really capable people. We have very bright people in this country. And, and the idea that we should be um, putting money into an industry, which, you know, we're asking questions about how sustainable and productive it is relative to um, other car manufacturing industries around the world. We will get the answers to that when we get the Productivity Commission but, review. I mean, I, I think, I think we, we can do other things too, and, and this is what seems to be lost in this debate. Yeah, but we need to be at the high end of the manufacturing sector, and I agree with you that pharmaceuticals is a really important industry for mm. this country, but the highest tech manufacturing we do across the board, from developing the intellectual property through to making the actual product, is cars, and we will be a dumber country the day we lose the car industry. Dumb and dumber. Look, we better leave it there. To the two of you, thank you so much, both of you, for your contribution. <laughs> this year. Have a wonderful Christmas, Kelly and Richard. Yeah, you too, Tom. Thanks, Tom. And I'll look Kelly. forward to seeing you both back in 2014. More, more calls coming up. It's 14 to 5. Building stronger, healthier and better communities. That's what we want. I'm Bill kuzner Chuk. We want communities with character, peace and quiet, amenity, accessibility to work and play. Is our government delivering? This week on Streetwise, I'll give you valuable advice on what builds stronger, healthier and better communities for us to live, work and play in. Don't forget the suburb quiz and plenty of prizes to be won. Get Streetwise this Saturday from 11am on 3AW693. Proton dealers get the strangest calls. Hello? Don't tell me you're just ringing to say how happy you are with your Proton Purvey. Yeah, fifteen nine ninety. Drive away is a bargain, and you've worked out how much you'll save with five years cap price servicing and five years premium roadside assistance. I know what you're saying. Go to proton.com.au for your local dealer, or call one three hundred office for a test drive. Preve by Proton. Motor on. Royal Brunei Airlines. Tranquility, tradition and understated elegance. An affordable and exceptional choice when flying to London or Southeast Asia. Flying daily from Melbourne via the exotic stopover of Brunei. Get in.